Hey there guys, this is Brian Mounts, we're on TurfMechanic.com, and today we're going to be talking about spraying weeds till their death in the ultra-high heat. Why do most weed killers say don't spray weeds in high temperatures, 85 plus, 95 plus, 90 plus? Depends on the product, depends on, I don't know, the bottle, but all of them, all of them say don't spray weeds in high heat. Well, Quite honestly, there's a lot of places around the country in the middle of the summer where it never really gets below 90 degrees. Uh, 85, I mean, I don't know, maybe in Texas and Alabama and Florida, these places might hardly ever get below 85 degrees in the middle of the summer. What are you guys to do? Let's talk about it a little bit more. Here's my good kid's swimming pool. It's full. I've got it in the shade right now. It wasn't in the sun. Here's another swimming pool over here. Oh no, we had a picnic over there. There it is. We got it over there in the sun. We got shades up. We got my umbrella going. It is hot. Today is, I don't know, what is today? Like June 27th, June 26th, something like that. Uh, I live in South Oregon. It never gets hot in June. Certainly not this. Today is 94 degrees. Tomorrow is supposed to be 98. On Monday, it's 102. Now, I would have to check, but I think that is a record-breaking temperature. On Monday, Seattle uh, is supposed to hit 109, which is blowing away their record temperatures. We run cold season grasses up here. Our grasses are not designed uh, by by nature, by mother nature, to exist in temperatures this hot. And quite honestly, some of these weeds don't really like it either. But the weeds are a little bit different from turf grasses. And in the middle of the summer, when weeds start cropping up, even if we put down weed pre-emergence, which I did, and many of you probably did as well, if we have weeds and we don't want to go out there in 100 degree weather and dig them out, what are we to do when all of these weed killers tell us that we're not supposed to be spraying uh, weed killer herbicides in high temperatures? All right, it's the middle of the afternoon. It's 94 degrees right now. Tomorrow it's 98. Like I said, then 102. Uh, overnight temperatures around here are 70 degrees overnight. Now, this is not normal for us where I live. Um, but it is probably normal for places down south. Overnight temperatures around 70 degrees. So before I get into, th I mean, the short answer is you spray first thing in the morning. Think about your muscles. If you work your muscles out really, really hard in the middle of the afternoon and then around six, seven o'clock at night, it's a bee. It's like a wasp. And then you go around like seven o'clock after your muscles have rested for an hour or so. They're just not strong. I mean, imagine doing like a hundred push-ups in the middle of the afternoon and then trying to, I don't know, push a car. Your muscles are tired. Uh, the grass, especially cold season grasses, warm season as well. Throughout the afternoon, throughout the heat of the day, your grass is actually grabbing energy from the sun. It's the whole photosynthesis process. It's taking that energy, photosynthesizing, turning sunlight energy into carbohydrates, turning it into energy for the plant. Now, the plant then uses that energy to grow and fend off disease and all of the stresses that happen. The energy through the photosynthesis process, it goes to a variety of things in the grasses, not just growth, but it goes to, um, to its immune system. Now we can feed our grass through fertilization to make the immune system a little bit more robust, but quite honestly, it's the energy that comes from the sun that is the driver here. Now, as temperatures go up, now cold season grasses like your perennial rise and Kentucky blue grasses, that's what you see in my yard. Uh, there are fine fescues, there are tall fescues, there are bent grasses, um, there are buffalo grasses. Uh, buffaloes span, you know, Texas all the way through the Great Plains up towards Montana. Uh, that's a pretty interesting grass type. All of these grass types do the same thing. They use that sun as energy to grow. In high heat and especially drought conditions, we're using more, and I say we, the grass is using more of that energy to grow and to resist, to resist dormancy and eventual death. It doesn't want that to happen. No living creature, be it animal or plant, wants that to happen. So 
if your grass is already stressed out because of drought, because of trampling, because of weed infestation, because of fungus, because of high heat, maybe, uh, maybe 95 degrees is normal for you. If your grass is already stressed out, then almost all of the energy put into that grass system through the photosynthesis process, assuming that you're irrigating some, most of that energy is going to sustain itself. It's not pushing new growth. This is why we don't fertilize in the summer unless we can keep it out of dormancy, unless we're confident that we can keep it out of dormancy. So where does this get to weed killers? Weed killers, although the weed killer bottle, whether you're running a cold season grass or a north season grass. <laughs> There's my wife over there laughing at me. So no matter whether we're running a cold season grass or a warm season grass, there are different active ingredients and weed killers that we use on the lawn. So atrazine might be used down south. Uh, Celsius is a product used down south for many southern grass types. Uh, of course, 2,4-D and dicamba and chlorac. All of these products go down on the lawn and they kill weeds. And they are safe for many grass types to use. But as temperatures increase, then the grass actually starts getting stunted by the product that we're putting down on the lawn. Stunting grass that is already stressed out can really throw it over the edge. But if you apply product to lawns and grasses that are very healthy, then they are going to stunt less. Now, high heat. Here are my lawn. I've got good green growing grass, despite the fact that we're in the mid-90s. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to be healthy and make it through the 100 plus degree days that we have coming. There's probably about two days where we're going to be over 100 degrees, but we're still in the mid 90s for the next week. Now, I am starting from a very healthy standpoint. At this point, I could go and take any weed killer for northern grasses and apply it to this lawn in 85, 90 degree weather and my lawn will probably be perfectly fine. But if I had allowed my lawn to go into, uh, I don't know, almost uh, summer dormancy here through the high heat and the drought, I mean, we barely had any rain over the past month and a half. If I had let that happen, and then in 90 degree weather, I go and I spray weed killer on the summer weeds that are here, it would stunt and potentially, I don't know about kill, but it would really stunt the grass that I have here. Now, weed killers put this uh, temperature thing on the label because they know this. They know that uh, in an ideal situation, grass that is growing, not dormant, healthy, uh, in all regard, is going to stand up to uh, these weed killers just fine eventually though as the temperatures continue to climb even healthy grass is going to succumb just so imagine like i don't know imagine running a marathon in like 70 degree weather you would be chugging water throughout but i don't know if you were conditioned for marathon running you'd probably be fine what if it was 80 degrees you'd be drinking more and more water what if it was 90 degrees eventually you would start slowing down uh the best marathon runners in the world if you throw them in like death valley 120 degree weather i doubt they're going to be pushing two minute or two hour 10 minute marathons at some point the heat uh gets to even the healthiest and most conditioned uh, marathon runners and the same thing for the grass these uh, weed killers attack the weeds now each active ingredient works a little bit differently but they're also attacking the grass the difference is the energy that the grass can pull from the sun and the moisture so i mean what are you, you're basically taking sunlight and water and carbon dioxide and turning it into plant we're basically creating plant uh, plant material from sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. The energy needed to do that, the plant can actually regenerate enough energy to keep doing that. But in, as the temperature increases and increases, and then we need extra energy to fight off the weed killer that we apply, then it's eventually going to succumb to the temperature. It's going to succumb to the stress. So all of this is to say, if you are running 
a warm season grass and temperatures are regularly over 100 degrees but your lawn is very healthy and it's green and it's growing and it's disease free and it's bit generally not stressed at all you'll probably be perfectly fine putting down any of the southern grass type weed killers so long as you i don't know take reasonable steps wait for the next morning just like if you max your muscles out in the afternoon you don't want to go doing like heavy lifting in the evening your muscles are tired wait to the next day sleep on it a little bit your muscles will recover a little bit by the morning the same thing with your grass throughout the rest of the afternoon let's say you live in like phoenix arizona and it's 115 during the day first thing in the morning 7 a.m in july maybe it's 85 maybe 90 you know but at least your grass has recovered a little bit it slept through the night uh, so long as your grass is healthy otherwise you can apply these products now it's going they're going to do better if you wait for the random weekend where you get a little bit of a cool off uh, same thing here. Uh, I sprayed a couple weeds over at my friend Robbie's house, my project lawn, the project lawn that I'm working on. Uh, but I did it three days ago because one week ago we were around 93, 94 degrees during the day. And then uh, three days ago we dropped down into the mid 80s. And now we're back in the 90s. We're going to be pushing 100 again. The point here is if you see some seed heads, pluck them off, throw them away and wait for the temperatures to drop five to ten degrees uh, even if your temperatures are 95 in the morning and you can get them to drop to 90 by waiting a week do it your lawn is going to uh, respond a little bit better if we do that the thing to keep in mind here really one of the most important things to keep in mind here is whether you're running a fescue or a kentucky bluegrass or a bermuda or a saint aug no matter what grass type you run check the label of the weed killer that you're going to be using make sure that your grass type is uh, safe for use now it's going to have a temperature uh, warning don't spray over 90 you know whatever it is but here's what i want you to remember if your grass is particularly healthy and temperatures are right at that cutoff or maybe even a little bit higher it's probably going to be fine to use the product in moderation so long as you use it on the best day of the week possible for temperatures in the morning. Now you'll probably be fine doing it in the afternoon, maybe not quite getting the day of the week perfect, but if you wait for the best day of the week in the morning, early in the morning at the lowest temperature time of the day, and your, and your grass is particularly healthy going into this, it's going to be safe to be using these products even above that maximum temperature threshold. If, however, your grass is stressed for any reason whatsoever, and you apply these products at the temperature threshold, even at the optimal time of the week, you might still be damaging the grass. You might be damaging the grass even if you're a little bit under that threshold. Probably not so much if you're under, but if you're at that temperature threshold and your grass is stressed, watch out for stunted growth or problems that, uh, I don't know, it's always a sliding scale. Are you gonna kill your grass? Eh, it's a sliding scale of uh, getting worse and worse and worse. If your grass is healthy though, you can usually go above that threshold. There's a reason that we build soil health, that we, that I emphasize building the immune system of our grass, the tolerance of our grass for everything. Because if my grass is exceptionally healthy, then that means it's going to be able to fight off all forms of disease and be able to hold up to the stresses of weed killers in high temperature if I choose to apply them. Over on that side of my lawn, I got a couple little spots that I'm gonna be testing out some weed killers on Monday when it's 102. I'm very curious to see how the lawn responds because my lawn is very healthy right now. Anyway, with that said, let's get back to what I was just saying because I just had to add this in, I forgot that. Now I'll go and show you here, I'll throw it up on the screen and kind of show you what we did all over the project lawn. 
a solid month ago, we did a blanket application of weed killer and it worked really, really well. Uh, three days ago when we had that small drop in temperatures, first thing in the morning on the coldest, <laughs> the coldest day, we applied weed killer at about 75 degrees in the morning. And, uh, but we only did a spot treatment and we used an organic product. So we used a, uh, a an iron hitta product. I just call it hitta. I don't know what other people call it. It's an iron uh, natural product. Uh, it's a formulated chelated iron that goes in and overwhelms the weed and kills it. It's not a chemical. So um, I do apply chemical stuff to the lawn from time to time, but I tend to want to use natural and organics as much as possible. That's another topic, but let's go take a look at some of that. Today's June 24th here in Klamath Falls over at the project line. Today we've got a break in the weather. Last week it was uh, in the mid 90s, uh, mid to low 90s, which is incredibly hot for this time of year where we live. Rarely do we get that get up that hot in mid June. Even in the middle of summer, we rarely get that hot. Next week, we're supposed to touch 100 degrees, which almost never happens where we live. So this is a time of stress for our lawns, but we're still dealing with weeds over here at the project lawn. Let me show you. Now, if you remember, let me zoom out here. Now, if you remember this entire area of the lawn right here, right where we've got a lot of dirt, used to be a lot of weeds. Now, it was approximately five weeks ago that we sprayed this down with a uh, ready-to-spray product, a hose-in product from the Ortho Company. Within a week, everything looked like it was dying, uh, but you could still see where the weeds were. Here we are a few weeks later and it is just bare dirt. Like that product killed everything very, very well. Uh, it was a 2,4-D, uh, Micropop P and, uh, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head the other, the other active ingredient, but it did really great killing off a lot of the weeds, leaving the grass. Now our grass has continually been sprinkled and we're kind of at the tail end of the fertilizers that we put down on the lawn uh, six weeks ago. But the grass itself that is here is looking very healthy, especially considering the fact that we just came out of abnormally warm temperatures. Now, I don't want to say that the, uh, the weed killer stopped everything because we do have a few things. You can see over here, we got little things coming up right there, like that, right here. We got a few others here on the fringe of the yard. And then over here where we identified kind of the worst of the area for weeds, well, we got one of those little guys. You're also going to find over here, this is where the worst of the stuff was, uh, we're getting a lot of these uh, kind of creepy crawlies. I'm not a weed identifier by, by name, so... I come up with my own stuff. Hey, hey, what's up, Maya? So over here, we still have a good number of weeds, but it's really kind of localized to this one little spot. Now, initially we anticipated possibly doing a second application of the weed killer spray that we used before, the ortho. Since the weeds are really localized to this one little spot, we're gonna switch over to a different product. But right now, this is the important part. It is hot. Today it is currently, as I'm filming, it's about 75 degrees, it's early morning. Later in the day, we're supposed to get up to 84, 85 degrees. And in two days, we're back in the 90s. In four days, we're already up to 100. But for now, because we only have localized uh, weeds still present in the lawn, we're gonna spot spray instead of blanket spray the whole area. And instead of using a chemical, like we did last time, we're gonna use a natural product, an iron product. All right, here we are in the back of my truck. Um, this is what I brought with us. The, this is what we sprayed down as a blanket spray the other day, uh, a month ago or so. Uh, this is largely the same stuff, except for uh, it adds I'll show this label better here on the screen. This also adds a quinclorac element to it uh, and you spray it differently. Um, I did not bring my sprayer because I didn't believe we were gonna use this. Here's another option for 
this is all over the counter stuff by the way uh, here's another option for spot spraying it's just a little trigger spray it's going to be very similar to the ortho product um, the difference is here we're adding a little bit of quinclorac into it as well uh, again these are chemicals what we're end up going to what we're going to end up using today is this natria product this is an iron this is a head the product i have a video about about me using this product oh i don't know it was about back in 2020 i'll link to it down in the description below is from it was a different brand um, but you kind of use it for it's i don't know if this is considered organic but it's definitely natural it's not a chemical you're literally putting down iron on the lawn iron uh, formulated to overwhelm weeds but not the grass itself all right robbie what do you think about the weed kill process so far i mean killing the weeds has been super easy and i'm really impressed by how much it did it took a few days before i really saw quite how much it was going to do but then like all the dandelions are gone except for i think a spot that i just completely missed right in the very back the grass is looking really nice i mean not a lot of it yet yeah we still got some we still got some dirt spots yeah, got, that we'll we fill in later go, but like it's not this like thick reedy grass that it was like hard like would be hard if you stepped on it barefoot that kind of thing yeah it's nice grass yeah it actually feels pretty good when yeah. you run your hands through it now yeah uh, or at least like if you if you find like one of those tufts over there where there's actual yeah. grass it feels like a pleasant lawn right which i didn't even know i could do that <laughs> i didn't know that was possible with this lawn this is basically an iron product right so we're not putting any more chemicals down we already did our pre-emergent chemical application and then we did the blanket spray uh initial weed kill so you know if anyone's watching this channel you know that i'm i err on the side of not using chemicals as much as possible so now this just sounds really neat because it's like it sounds like overwhelming the weeds with um like iron. You're talking about iron yeah so let's see how it works we're not these weeds right here are the ones that the um that the blanket spray didn't kill to the root obviously so let's you know let's see what happens we'll spray this stuff down and and we'll just have to check up on it later on this is really all it takes when it comes to spot spraying there are various forms of spot sprayers you can get a uh, little wand style things where you have like a big gallon jug and then there's a wand with a little trigger um, or you could use these this is what i used on the patch of grass in my in my yard or i should say the patch of weeds in my yard that i killed off and then um, put grass down uh, and they work generally fine enough and at this point i'm almost halfway done with the weeds that are left so this kind is definitely ideal I think for what I have left just remember that when we fertilize the lawn NPK miners all of that that's kind of like taking vitamins um, I don't know every morning when you wake up with your morning coffee uh, you're not gonna live on vitamins alone grass needs the energy that it gets from photosynthesis water and carbon dioxide that's the carbohydrates it turns it and turns that into sugars that it uses and then healthiness the ex, the excess healthiness that happen come from all of the fertilization techniques that we do fodder for another video i'm sure if you've got any questions about this uh drop them in the comments below i'm not going into specifics because literally there are a lot of different uh, weed killing uh, active ingredients even in the organic and natural space now in the organics a lot of them are non-selective uh, the iron kind of is selective which is why I use it here in the lawn a little bit I do prefer hand plucking out weeds but that's mostly because as you see I don't have a lot of weeds I've gotten to the point where single digging up of weeds is is a reasonable activity for me if you're watching this deep in the video thank you very much and i hope you find the uh, the follow-up to the project line here uh interesting as well 
make sure to watch my wheat pre-emergent video. I'm gonna have that linked up in here at the end of this and down in the description below. I do use wheat pre-emergence. Uh, it's one of the few chemical products that I use pretty regularly uh, every spring. I go into great detail in that. So hopefully you'll find that uh, helpful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in another video.